one of the hardest cognitive skills of the year and perhaps one of the ones that students have struggled with the most is the evaluating arguments cognitive skill. And so I decided to give students an opportunity to improve their grade if they want to. So this is an optional assignment that's either because you want to improve your skill or because you want to challenge yourself or you want to just have fun trying to do something here at the end of the year. Now, COVID-19 has completely changed the story of 2020. And a lot of people have had different opinions on where the lockdown has been imposed on society since this. And on one hand, you have the importance of stopping the epidemic and saving lives. And on the other, the impact that it has on the economy and people's livelihoods. So in this assignment, you have to choose one out of two articles that are linked below where the authors make arguments for or against the lifting of the quarantine, you know? And so uh, your job is to analyze the quality of the arguments that's made by these authors. So to do so, uh, first, you click on the link of the article, and then you do the following things. Summarize what the article authors are actually saying it. Even better, you can actually explain the argument instead of just summarizing it uh, for even better grades. So get a five, and that's what you need to do. Uh, and then evaluate the argument based on the logic of, given by the author and the relevance and credibility of the evidence giver. So in other words, is the, the relevant, does the evidence matter, and is it credible evidence? So... To do that, you have to consider first, is the evidence empirical or not? Is it based on an experiment or is it not based on an experiment? Is the data scientific data or not? And how do you know that that's the case? Uh, even better, uh, try to evaluate if the author is giving facts or is it giving opinions. In other words, are these facts which we know based on evidence, empirical evidence, or are they based on opinions uh, or how the author feels about the subject? And how do you know that that's the case? Finally, uh, is the author interpreting data information in a way that's consistent with science or not? And how do you know that that's the case? And at an even better level, what are the specific errors in logic or false statements which are being made by the author? And how do you know that that's the case? So I actually created a guide to help you walk you through the process of doing these things. But first I'm gonna talk about how we actually grade this assignment. Now it's pretty complex because there's a lot of pieces to the way that this is uh, evaluated. But if you look at a two, the key thing is that you first need to summarize the, uh, the opinion of the article, right? And then you have to actually state your opinion on whether the argument is, is valid or not. And that should be based at least on the relevance of the evidence. Does the evidence matter for the topic that's given? Is it even, uh, is there even good evidence in the first, is there evidence in the first place? And is the relevance related to the, po the, the, the topic at hand? And one way to consider if the evidence is good or not is to see if this evidence is based on uh, actual scientific data that's actually gathered from experiments. Uh, three moves on from a summary to a very accurate summary, a summary that actually really captures the argument that's made by the author and actually evaluates the, that, the logic of the reasoning based on more than just if the evidence is relevant, but on the nature of the evidence itself. Is the author just giving opinions on how he feels about the subject, or is he giving facts, which are based, again, on evidence? How do you know it's a fact? It's got to be based on scientific evidence that's been researched. And so it does so while also trying to evaluate the reasoning of the author, not just the evidence that's provided, but how he connects that evidence with some reasoning. So if you do some of this but not do all of this, you're probably going to be between a 2 and a, and a 3 or a 2.5. So there's a lot of moving pieces. There's the accuracy of the summary. There's the evaluating of the reasoning. And there's the looking at the quality or the nature of the evidence as far as is it fact or is it opinion. So if you do one but not the others, then you're going to be at a 2.5. To go from there to a 4, you have to take that a step further and talk about the credibility of the evidence. How do you know that you can trust this evidence, right? And not only that, but evaluate the interpretations made by the author as to whether or not the actual reasoning or the interpretations given of the evidence are scientifically reasonable. In other words, so if the author interpreted data, did he do so in a way that's consistent with what science says, right? And last but not least, for a five, not only are you summarizing the evidence, you are literally explaining the actual argument and explaining the science that refutes or supports the argument behind it, while also tell, listing the ways in which the author uh, makes mistakes. Does he make false statements? Does he make errors in logic? What are the errors in logic specifically that the author makes? That is where you get to the next level uh, with the evaluating the arguments. And so I created a guide on the assignment to help you do this. First, 
I linked uh, to a resource that talks about how to check the credibility of evidence to see if evidence is credible or not. Then let me link both of the articles that you can use for this. And I put a, a space for you to choose a title, uh, depending on which article you picked, like the name of the author and list the link to the article. And then it walks you step by step on trying to get things done. First on summarizing the argument, and it has a prompt here too for you to explain the argument in more detail by briefly outlining the actual claims and evidence if you're trying to get that five. Then on part two, it asks you to pick a piece of evidence that's given by the author and describe what the evidence is uh, and how the author tries to use that evidence to support its point. Now you have to start evaluating the evidence by first asking yourself, is the relevant relevance relevant? How do you know that it's relevant? Is it related to the point that the author is trying to make? Is it, it does it matter to the topic at hand? Then you talk about if the evidence is credible and how you know it's credible. How do you know that you can trust the evidence? Then you ask yourself, is the evidence empirical? And how do you know that that's the case? That means, is the evidence based on actual experimental research, scientific data? Yes or no? And how do you know that that's the case? Then you repeat this process for a second piece of evidence provided by the author in the paper. And if you want to do that for a third or fourth piece of evidence, you just, you just repeat this by copying down and creating new roles to continue the process. On part three, it has to do with breaking down the actual reasoning, which remember, it's necessary if you try to get a three or above. So you have to talk about what is this reasoning that the author tries to use to connect his claims and his evidence. How does the author try to explain why his evidence makes sense? And does the author do that by using opinions or by using facts? And how do you know the difference between the two of them? How do you know if he's just talking about what he feels about it or that he's actually basing this on real things that we know for sure? Facts based on empirical evidence, right? So does the author's reasoning is, is consistent with what science says to be true? So if he's interpreting data, if he's making claims, are these claims uh, reasonable with what science says? And how do you know that that's the case? In other words, does the author use science well? And last but not least, if you're trying to get a really good grade, are there any specific errors in logic that the author makes? And how do you know that the logic is flawed? And are any specific false statements made by the author? Incorrect information that's given. And how do you know that the information is wrong? So, and finally, you can actually put some final thoughts on what you think about the overall quality of the work based, based done by the author. Defend yourself. Why should I believe you that the author did a good job or a bad job? And if you want to, you can put all of this in a cohesive, to well-together paragraph that defends everything you said in the previous steps above, and that is how it, you do it. Now, there are a lot of moving parts for this topic, but if you go step by step and break it down like you did, like on you saw on the guide, you should be able to do a better job possibly than you did before. I have launched a challenge. It's up to you if you want to accept it, but don't remember to prioritize other things since this is an extra project designed to help kids or have kids have fun if they want to do so. All right, I appreciate it. Hope you have a good week and don't do anything that would make them more proud.